this is this is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of the Three D Boxing Podcast. We are back with the second show of the day. Three uh, D Boxing Podcast comes at you twice a day, every day, uh, Monday through Saturday, and once on Sunday. Um, keep you up to date, eight ten minutes on the latest uh, boxing news. Keep you up to up to date on the hot stove, the rumor mill, mill, and all the great uh, latest news and rumors. I'm uh, gonna recap today's show. Uh, on today's show, today's fight card, uh, Brandon Lee scores a sensational knockout um, over Samuel T. Uh, absolutely impressive stuff. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, please like and subscribe. Share on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Um, yeah, so follow us on all forms. Uh, hit the thumbs up uh, button. Uh, hit the, smash the, uh, the bell, the thumbs up, all that good stuff. Let's just get into it. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to... Recap the uh, the showbox card today, which was a, an excellent little card, by the way. Uh, Brandon Lee um, headlined the card. This kid had some bright future. Um, Brandon Lee has it all. Uh, so he's obviously a puncher, right? Like he's heavy-handed, but he's patient and composed, and every purpose. Every purpose. Every punch has a pur- purpose. There's no wasted energy. There's no wasted motion with this kid. There's no throw. There's nothing he throws away. There's nothing wasted with this kid. Every punch he throws has a purpose, and every punch is thrown on purpose with a purpose, right? Like, and it's to hurt you. Um, the 140 pound division is on short notice. Now, the, look, the kid's got a long way to go. Okay, he still gets hit. He comes forward. He's aggressive. I don't know if he can fight any other way yet. Okay, he hasn't had to. Samuel T, the guy he just beat, is a decent little fighter. You know, there's nothing wrong with Samuel T. Um, he's a showbox regular. He's 17 and four now. He's lost to Trayshawn Wiggins. He's lost to Montana Love. You know, every time he's been in, and and he fought, um, well, he beat Kenneth Sims Jr. and he lost to uh, Montana Love and Trayshawn Wiggins. Uh, and every time he's been with these guys, he's been competitive up until now. So that means two things. That means he doesn't win fights, but he makes tough fights. He was so far outmatched against Brandon Lee. Like, it wasn't even close. Brandon Lee steamrolled this kid, was playing with them, and it only went as far as it did because Brandon Lee seemed like he wanted to go rounds. Uh, Brandon Lee was able to hurt him every time he hit him. It was, it was target practice. And look, coming forward, Brandon Lee is composed. And uh, he's got the ring IQ. He he got the shot selection. He goes down to the body, goes up to the head. He picks the shots well. That he can do well once he's at the highest level. And he's going to be there. He's going to be at the highest level. He's going to be a top ten well uh, junior welterweight, lightweight. I don't know what weight he plans on continuing at, but he's going to be in the top ten. He's that good. Is there more gears? Is there? Does he have more tricks in his bag? Or is he only a come-forward fighter? Because if he's only a come-forward fighter, there could be another pressure fighter who could beat him up on the inside. There could be a boxer who could move, stick and move, and, and outbox him. Um, but he's going to get to that level based on what he has. What he has in addition, like what, what his BC, we know what his A game is. A game is come forward, um, stand in, walk you down, and fire off big shots that are pinpoint accurate, heavy-handed, meaningful punches. What he can do after that um, against the highest level, we're going to find out. Um, again, Samuel T is a decent test, and he passed that test with flying colors. I mean, there's no question. He beat him better than, than um, Montana Love did. Uh, he, he took care of business. He, he blew him out. Uh, but his last couple of fights, uh, Jimmy Williams, Dakota Linger. Look, there's not, there's nothing wrong with these names. And, and these are the guys he's fought in the pandemic. He fought Jimmy Williams, 
uh, Dakota Linger and Samuel T. That's fine. And, and, and for at least 21. So for a 21-year-old, the resume is fine. But he's going to be fighting better guys. And, and if he can destroy a guy like Samuel T, there's, there's no reason not to move him up and move him forward quicker. I get he's only 21 and there's no rush, but, like, there's no reason not to match him tougher than this. Let's, you know, let, let's see how he does with a legitimate guy at 140 pounds. I mean, just to give you a name off the top, how would he do with a Jack Catterall? Is that is that too much of a, okay. How would he do with a Tyrone McKenna? And I know these, Pablo Cano, Eve Zalissi. Um, how would he do with guys like that? How would he do with Cletus Seldon? That's an interesting one. You know, how would he do with those guys? It's interesting, right? Uh, Cletus Seldon is one that I think that can be made. How could he do in a fight like that? Cletus Seldon can crack, right? Cletus Seldon can fight on the inside. Then let's see how he does it. Because that if he passes that test, one comes, put him in with a boxer and, and test him and move him up. Um, but Brandon Lee. It's for real. Brandon Lee is the goods. We're going to see him in, in big, meaningful fights. Now, whether he wins those, that's yet to be determined. But he's going to get there. His skills, his power, he's going to get there. Um, yeah, but the difference between a champion and a contender is how does he react? Um, how does he react when he's taken out of his fight? Right? Because someone's going to, he's not going to knock everyone out. All right? and, and someone's going to take him out of his fight. How, well, how does he respond then? Um, but Brandon Lee is well on his way. Also wanted to um, talk about the opening bout of the night. Another guy who really seems to be on his way is Vic Padilla, a Puerto Rican fighter, a featherweight. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, skills, southpaw, real sharp. He got knocked down in a very weird way in the first bout, in the first round. It was like a glancing blow that hit him on the elbow and then hit him in the chest and like set him off balance and down. Like, at first, it looked like their, their feet got tangled up. Like, that was my assumption. But then they saw the replay. No, it was just a shot that dropped them, but that didn't really land. It was really strange. Uh, but that guy, Vic Padilla, really good skills, really good south post, 22 years old. A lot to like about him. Um, and then, short dog. Um, Jordan White scored a big upset as well um, on, on the card. And so this was a really good card. And, and short dog scores a sensational knockout out of nowhere, right? Like, um, he's got Marcel Lopez. Marcel Lopez is, is Misael Lopez is, is rallying, coming back in the fight. And then, um, White just drops him and then finishes him. And, you know, a fight, a win like that changes your life. And I, I don't mean to overstate that. It changes your life. He's a legitimate contender now. And, and Arthur McCanty, who I think is the worst ref in the sport, is telling him to relax when he's celebrating after he scores a sensational knockout on national television that changes his life. It's like, get to stay out of the ring. Just... No one asked you whether or not I should stay calm. I thought the stoppage was the right stoppage by Arthur McCanty. But, like, guys, this is a, 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 a career life-changing, a career-changing, life-changing knockout that White just scored. Um, and, and the stupid referee is telling him to calm down and not celebrate. That's got to stop. He can celebrate all he wants. Um, let me know what you guys think. Did you like the show box? I thought it was a sensational card. Um, thoughts, comments below. Uh, please like and subscribe. Remember, uh, Quick Hits comes at you twice a day, every day. Eight to ten minutes, we keep it real quick, real brief, to the point, just to keep you up to the latest in all boxing news and rumors. Um, it is March 10th, 2021. Ivan Calderon is still not in the Boxing Hall of Fame. That needs to change. Let's get the Iron Boy in the Boxing Hall of Fame. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3 Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.